Hello everyone, it is C.L. King live back for another uh, very interesting episode of It's All About Youth. And tonight I am going to share the stage with one of my lovely daughters, Mariah King, and she's going to give you some very informative information on fire and home safety. The reason why uh, you say, well, what's that got to do with anything about youth? Well, because Mariah's plugged into this group called the 4-H, and I like to always highlight these organizations that take time to make sure that our young people are developing, gives moms and dads a, a resource to get your kids plugged into something positive and allow them to expand their horizons. But let me just talk about this real quick, and I, I promise to be brief because Mariah, who's off off camera, uh, told me that I can't talk very long tonight. I wanted to, I, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago that I was going to talk about it, so I'm going to talk about it now. Um, I am seeing, and we are seeing, if you can just go on Google and Google everything, you will be able to see that there is an overabundance of activity going on in North Carolina and, in, and throughout America. What I mean by that is, moms and dads, hear me out before you start throwing tomatoes at me. Listen, we've got t-ball, we've got soccer, we've got karate, we've got gymnastics, we've got uh, rec ball, we've got summer football, we've got peewee, we've got intermediate, we've got advanced, we've got karate, we've got piano, we've got ballet, we've got all of these things. And here's what I've been witnessing and through my through my encounters talking to people about how busy we are as people carting our kids to every event everywhere under the sun. What I mean by that is, okay, we got Monday through Friday, we got school, and then every evening we've got uh, this league and that league and this league and that league, and then on Saturday, of course, we've got to get up early to go cheer and dance and fly off the walls, and then Sunday, we've got something going on where a game or a competition, and then it starts all over again. And I'm not saying that activity is bad, but just remember this. I want you to remember this very clearly. A very wise man told me this. He said, there is a difference between activity and accomplishment. Activity, yes, you're busy, you're moving, you're making things happen. But what are you truly accomplishing? Now, some people will say, how dare you challenge me taking my son to T-ball? Listen, I'm not challenging you to take your, taking your son to T-ball. What I'm challenging you to do, mom and dad, is to get out in the yard and play t-ball with your kid. What I'm challenging you to do is not let necessarily the coach be the new number one influencer of your young person. What I'm also saying is, is that sometimes we have got to put the brakes on. What I mean by that is sometimes we just got to stop and chill out. Let the house become a mess. Not go to 15 events on a Saturday. And just spend quality time. Some of that includes doing absolutely nothing. Because remember, activity weighed on the balances and the scale compared to accomplishment. There is a very, very fine line to where you can find yourself rushing to all of these important events for little Johnny and little Susie and bypassing the essential events that sometimes don't involve a team at all. So before I get put on record and notice as saying that I am totally against uh, taking your child and getting them plugged in, let me just be clear. I just told you Mariah is getting ready to do a presentation for you folks out there in CL King group land on fire home safety, which she participates with the 4-H group. I'm not saying that being getting your kids involved in things is wrong. I'm just saying that we are seeing statistically an overabundance of activity. And I give a very, very clear explanation when I talk about professional sports to young people. The ratio of how many people play in the NBA, over four, just a little over 400 folks, compared to the millions that play high school and college basketball. It's narrowed way, way down once you look to do it for a profession. 
So though it's important, it teaches them character and it builds their self-esteem, I'm just telling you that those building blocks are truly laid by mom and dad's hands. No offense to coaches. Coaches are essential, but let me just tell you, the moral compass and the gauge of barometer for your child's course in life is determined by mom and dad. And so when we are filling our kids' schedule where they have to have three iPhones, an iPad, and a secretary, I don't even have all that, to accomplish and juggle all of their events, just take a moment and stop and say, you know, maybe we could not do ballet, dance, tap, rap, football, basketball, cheerleading, and underwater polo this year. Maybe we'll cut out a few of those. And on those nights that we actually can be home together as a family, we'll sit down and do something together. Because I'm going to tell you this. All those coaches and all those things in the world that you, that you get your kids involved in, that we get our kids involved in, are great. But there's nothing like the quality time that they spend with us. So with that, I wanted to leave you with that note. I apologize for maybe the heavy nature that it was, but it's the truth. That you can go online and re find the statistics of your for yourself that our kids are busier now than they've ever been. But yet I'm speaking on more topics that are challenging our young people than I ever have. So activity versus accomplishment, we have to remember that there is a fine balance. So with a very unique segue, I am going to turn over the prestigious uh, bronze microphone of CL King Group International to my lovely daughter, Mariah, who's going to give you her speech that she's getting ready to uh, deliver at the 4-H Club on home fire safety. So let's give it up for Mariah Danelle King. <sighs> Did you hear all those fans out there, Mariah? I mean, they're screaming your name. All right. Take it over, Mariah. You got it. Hi. My name is Mariah King, and I am with the Carter County Crystal Clovers 4-H Club. And I would like to ask you a question. How much time do you think you have to escape your home in the event of a fire? Um, five minutes. The amount of time it takes to escape, to escape your home is only two minutes. That's not a lot of time. That's why I am here to present to you the importance of having a home fire safety plan. Did you know that in the time I took to do my introduction and ask you that question, you should have already been out of your home? That is how quick a fire can easily spread, and that is why it is more important to have a plan. There, there are more deaths than, than injuries relating to fire. Fire departments in the United States responded to an estimated 1,389,500 fires in 2000, 2011. 370,000 of those fires were home fires. The number one leading cause of home fire deaths are a result of cooking, like grease fires. Grease can get out of hand and spread all over the place and cause a fire. And cooking left unattended, like an example here, that can catch on fire and cause your fire to cause your house to burn on fire. The second leading cause of death and injuries is by smoking. An ash can catch on fire or Wait, sorry. Falling asleep with a cigarette in your hand. The ash can be lit on fire and fall to the ground and catch your house on fire. Why are there so many fires? Because 62% of home fire deaths are a result of non-working smoke detectors. Why don't they work? It's because of low battery annoyance. Low battery annoyance is where a smoke detector will beep annoyingly and they would, the family would just turn it off. That's not the right thing to do. The right thing to do would be to change the battery and the beeping will stop. There are two kinds of smoke detectors. One of them is called the ionization smoke detector and the other one is called the photoelectric smoke detector. The ionization smoke detector senses flaming fires. 
and the photoelectric smoke detector sends its smoldering fires. It's not just important to have a smoke detector, but it is vital to have a plan. A plan should consist of a map of all possible exits, including windows, clear clutter away from doors, which means there, there shouldn't be a lot of clothes in front of the doors because if there ever was a fire, you wouldn't be able to leave. Let's take one pause. Um, that is a little message out there to those kids who clean their rooms, right? Right? Yes, your room could be a fire hazard, could it not? <laughs> also, a meeting place away from your home, which means like the mailbox or the bus stop. Phone number emergency calls, one person with all the phone numbers for emergency. And a buddy system. A buddy system is where one person will make sure all the family is gathered. Put steps into place to ensure your home has a safety plan. Making sure your smoke detectors are properly working will reduce the risk of being unprepared. Change the battery and keep your family safe. Choose a smoke detector that has dual detection for flaming fires and smoldering fires. Like I said, smoldering fires, a photoelectric smoke detector, and an ionization inside one, so it senses both. Don't, be, don't become a statistic by disabling your smoke detector just because it's beeping annoyingly. To help reduce the number of fatalities, people should be aware of the dangerous causes of home fires. Plan today. My resources were www.nationalfireprevention.association.org and www.smokealert.net and the Newport Fire Station. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mariah. What a very informative uh, message that she gave to us. And, and I will have to admit, come on in, come on camera, Mariah, you can stay with us. I have to admit that um, uh, I have on occasion uh, over the years of our uh, of our living uh, been plagued by that annoying uh, beeping uh, thing and that means that I went in there and took the battery out instead of replacing the battery. Now isn't that common? That's just sad ain't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah but you know what that small little step that, that, that battery that cost two dollars and some change would save our seven hundred fifty thousand dollar home, wouldn't it? If we had a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar home one day, right, Brian? <laughs> Tremendous presentation. Listen, guys, this has been C. L. King, and of course, Mariah King, uh, telling you keep your home safe, change those batteries, and get to those good fire alarms. And also remember the balance: the balance of activity versus accomplishment. We'll see you guys next week for another exciting episode. I think I'll be having a special guest uh, where we're going to be talking about some really interesting topics related to substance abuse. So until then, we'll talk to you soon. Say bye. Bye.